here we are with Louise Forsley, Factory One rider on both the trials and enduro side. Uh, why don't you just give us a quick uh, bit of your background? Um, well, I started riding trials when I was uh, 12 years old and I um, took that pretty seriously and started going to local events and nationals and um, I won the women's national class um, six times uh, through the course of like 10 years um, and I was kind of like uh, in and out of um, diff uh, different levels um, between the expert class, women's class, um, expert sportsman class. So I did that until I was around, uh, I think it was 22 when I first got my first dirt bike, um, enduro bike, and it was a KTM 200. And then I started racing enduro cross and some national enduros and um, kind of just got into that side of the of the motorsports. And then um, I did that for a few years. And then I got a job on a traveling stunt show called Marvel Universe Live. And I got that through being a technical motorcycle rider. And um, I ended up learning a lot about stunts and the stunt industry as well. So um, now I'm kind of kind of trans transitioning into that. Um, I'm no longer on the tour. I did that for five years. Um, and it was a really great experience. But um, yeah, I guess that's, I'm a trials rider, enduro rider, stunt woman, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jack of all trades for sure so with that what's been your favorite moto memory um definitely going to x games in 2012 um it was something that i had watched um in 2011 where it was um enduro cross was the new sport to x games and they had a women's class um and they invited select riders. They, they, a lot of them were moto racers and some supercross racers. Um, and I just, I watched the race at home, kind of wondering and thinking like, oh my God, I should be doing this because enduro cross is a mix of enduro riding and trials riding. So I figured like, wow, this is an opportunity to go to the X Games. And it's something I'd always dreamed of, but um, trials is never at the X Games. So uh, once I saw that, I kind of, Honestly, the next day, I just figured out how I was going to start training for Enduro Cross. Um, I did have a dirt bike at that time, so I kind of just like planned that in one year, I want to be able to go to the X Games and, and race Enduro Cross. So, um, so I pretty much did that and um, started going to Enduro Cross races and then got an invite to X Games, which was like just, that alone was really exciting. And then um, once I, you know, finally got there, I just had the full experience of being at the X Games and um, raced really well and got a silver medal there. So that was definitely like, hands down, best day, most <laughs> best experience. Like, loved it. It was awesome. No doubt, awesome, awesome. That's a that is a great moto memory. Um, so, what three people, living or dead, would you want to spend a day with? Um, so since Mother's Day is coming up and my mom lives in Massachusetts and I live here in California, that would be, my mom would be one of them just to, uh, have a, a day with her. Although I'll probably go home this summer and spend some time with them, um, uh, with both my parents. Um, also I've always, uh, Danny McCaskill has always been one of my favorite athletes and I actually got to spend some time with him. Um, uh, well, a group of us did, we all got to hang out with him, um, when we were touring in Europe and he just he was just like such a nice fun guy and uh you know f full of stories and just cool energy and so that would be fun to spend another day with him and then um man it's kind of tough I guess um who would be another one um uh, one of the top CrossFit athletes Tia uh Tia Claire Toomey she is actually the um best ranked uh, women's CrossFit athlete. Uh, she's the fittest in the world. And I just can't imagine what her routine is like, what, you know, what she um, does on a daily basis, what she has to eat, what, you know, her rest and recovery is like. So I think it'd be pretty cool to, to be able to just be like a fly on the wall and see, see what she does on a daily basis. Yeah, for sure. It's been that time. Um, so trials enduro. If you had to pick one for the rest of your life, 
which one would it be? Uh, that's that's so hard because I love both so much. And recently, you know, I've just been uh, spending a lot of time on my bikes and going back and forth uh, between both and really enjoying that. And like, I've definitely um, had times where I was burnt out on trials and I didn't want to ride trials that much. So, uh, and if you have a dirt bike, you can ride, you know, a little bit of trials on it, but you can also go for trail rides, ride moto, um, you know, just free ride. There's a lot of like fun stuff to do on a dirt bike. So it's hard to, it's hard to say, but I would probably stick to enduro and having a dirt bike. Okay. That's, that's, that's fair. I, I feel so bad for saying that for all my trials people out there. <laughs> ah, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, you, you're right. You have, you can do a little bit more on the enduro and you can still do some trials, but the two seem to help each other when it comes to just riding period and your technical skills. So, uh, I, I know it was a very, very tough question, but, uh, uh, I, I appreciate that. So with, with that, what model, uh, Sherco Enduro bike are you riding when you do, you know, you've won queen of the moto. So, you know, from that to Enduro cross. So tell everybody what model you're riding. Um, I have the 125 right now. It's the SE 125R. Um, so since I've been, uh, off of tour, off of tour. Um, well, so I was on tour for five years and then um, got off of tour and then a 125 was my first dirt bike back. And I've just been having so much fun on that. And um, I don't want to say I'm like getting used to riding a dirt bike again, but you know, kind of, I, I kind of just want to like really enjoy my time on it and be comfortable on the bike. Um, and um, I think because my trial, my background is is so trials based, I'm I'm just more um, comfortable with the way that the 125 feels, handles um, the lightness of it. I just feel like I can control it much more, and I can, you know, like I'm more used to just having to pin it and then like use more like top end and or. Um, just rev it up like a trials bike and then use my clutch more instead of having a lot of power that I would have to control. So I am like right now I'm having a lot of fun on the 125. Um, I don't know, you know, if it'll be my forever bike, but for now it's, it's perfect. Okay. Good stuff. So then what model are you riding in trials then? Is it different displacement? Yes, it is. It's a 250 that I'm okay. riding. Um, a lot of the top trials guys and women some uh, choose to ride 300s. Um, I like the 250 kind of for the same reason. It's just a little less power. Um, and I, you know, rather kind of just like give it more and have to use the clutch um, to control that power than to kind of have it like getting away from me or having more power than I need. So. Okay. Awesome. Interesting. Um, well, you mentioned earlier you, you toured with Marvel Live. What was one of the most memorable stops for you? You said you traveled the, the world. So was there one particular that you're like, this is so cool? Yes. Um, we did travel through Europe for six months in 2016. And that's when we all got to hang out with Danny McCaskill um, and see a bunch of, you know, different countries and um, really cool cities. Uh, we had a, we had a lot of fun there. I also had a lot of fun in Canada. We traveled through, um, uh, me and my friends were driving at that time and we had, um, mountain bikes. So we got to travel through pretty much from the West coast to the East coast of Canada. And it was during the summer. So it was beautiful weather, um, and got to camp a little bit and mountain bike a bunch. And, um, yeah, that's those, I would say Canada and Europe were definitely the coolest. Nice, nice. Um, not everybody's familiar with the Trials National and, and how the event takes place. You know, you just show up. And so could you describe to everybody basically a trials event when you're competing against other women and, and Pat and they're, the pros are competing against each other? Is it just on the mountainside? Is, it, is, is there obstacles that are brought in? So if you could just explain to everybody how it works. Yeah, so, um, we lost sorry. Your... <laughs> okay. There you are, yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah, that was no my problem. sister calling me. I swear to God, she loves to call me at <laughs> times that I'm busy That's and then okay. ask me why I don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Trials National, is um, it takes place in certain areas that um, uh, local um, 
club we'll put together and um, it's basically where anybody in the US and the world would come to compete at the highest level of trials in the US um they they range from they have all different classes but like the three or four main lines would be a support line an expert line and then a pro line um the women's class uh rides the expert sportsman line so it's a combination um it's kind of somewhere in the middle okay uh, and uh, it's they are two day events with um, they usually you know we have about six hours to complete um, twelve sections and we have to do that three times so it's kind of up to us to manage our own time and um, uh, just yeah try to get through the sections that they have uh, made for us as um, as cleanly as possible okay got it and obviously it varies in the difficulty level as you get those lines get higher it's tighter maybe steeper rock to get up something like that yeah exactly so like the pro line which would be the hardest line is um all of the bigger obstacles uh like you said more tight they'd probably be a little bit longer um because there are more obstacles and bigger obstacles and you know less time to set up and then the easiest line would kind of be going around um all of the big the big stuff that the pro would would go up um which is pretty cool because they will make one section and there'll be three or four lines through through those sections and you basically have to follow markers um depending on what class you're in. got it um interesting that's that you know I, i'd like for everybody to go ahead and check something out the super trial is obviously great because it's all in one little area so it, it makes for fan friendly experience so um okay another kind of fun question here if you had to or which would you prefer four stroke or two stroke and you're obviously on two two strokes right now so i mean if you had to pick one what would it be yeah i would go with the two stroke just kind of from what I was saying before, the the way I, um, how I'm used to bikes handling and um, a four strokes is just a little bit different of a beast. And I just, I probably haven't spent enough time on it to get used to it. Um, but I, I really do like the way two strokes handle. Nice, nice. Um, you've represented the United States at Trial the Nations, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, what was that like? Tell us about that. Uh, it's a really fun experience. It makes you uh, very proud to 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 represent a country because everyone there, you know, we're all there for the same reason. Um, and it, it's exciting to be part of the USA team um, and, you know, just try to do our best. And then it's like, it's really a fun event too, because it's kind of at the end of um, everybody's uh like the world rounds are over the national rounds are over so everybody's kind of there to enjoy the experience um ride and uh yeah kind of just it, you know visit different countries since they choose a different country each year um and so i mean i've met like a lot of cool people um you know that continuously go to the trials the nation rounds yeah. and you know it's fun to go back and hang out with them yep um I know this because I follow your Instagram quite heavily and you're, you, you seem to be into CrossFit as a, as a form of staying fit for enduro and trials. So tell people what it takes to, to ride an enduro bike and a trials bike. I mean, the fitness that, that, that it takes that's required and what you do on a, on a weekly basis. Um, so actually when I would, when I was on the Marvel tour, we had a lot of downtime to work out and we didn't have um, so much riding going on because, um, we only had so much time to travel bikes and we didn't really have any time off. So anyways, it, it turned into the, the, like the next, um, you know, addiction or physical movement was, um, CrossFit. So I definitely noticed like a huge difference before I was on tour and doing CrossFit and I was racing and competing in trials then. Um, and that was, you know, prior to lifting. Um, y yes, I would do cardio here and there, but, um, once I started lifting and doing CrossFit, like I could see a huge difference in my strength, um, my body composition, uh, my endurance like now I can just last so much longer on the, on the bike and feel strong yeah. the whole entire time opposed to kind of just you know like getting weak or fatigued throughout the throughout the race um 
so yeah, that's, that's huge. And now it's, it's something that I rely on. And I, I know that I want to do that every single day because of those reasons, because it makes me a better writer. Um, I like the way I feel like I, you know, feel like a fit athletic person. So I definitely try to do CrossFit workouts, um, four, four to usually like four times a week. Um, right. it's less now because of, um, I have like a mountain bike a lot too. And because I've been riding so much more, but, um, I, you know, it's like lifting weights will be something that I always do from, from here on out and just constantly trying to strengthen my body. Awesome. Awesome. That's good advice for people. Um, if you're stranded on a deserted island and there's a there's a crate just sitting over there on the beach, what are you hoping's inside? Obviously, besides food and water. Okay. Yeah, I feel like so not creative with with these types of questions, but <laughs> I, don't know, I guess a phone so I could call somebody and like get out of there. <laughs> um, but also a dirt bike would be cool, so you could do some exploring or a trial bike. Um, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. That I I can appreciate trying to go explore. That's a that's a good one. Um, not bad at all. Uh, I think when the season kicks up here in late fall, you're going to be competing in the enduro cross season. Um, what are you looking forward to most about enduro cross? Um, I, I you know I just I really like that type of racing. The um, it it's definitely different than what I'm used to, but it's, um, I got to race two enduro cross races last year after tour. Um, and so it's, I feel like coming off of tour and then having all of this, this stuff happen where it was kind of slowed down. Um, yeah, I feel like I haven't gotten enough racing in again since, since I used to race back in 2012 and, um, 13. So I guess I'm looking forward to, to everything and kind of feeling like it's going to be a whole new experience all over again, because I kind of feel, um, since I've just been out of the scene for a while. So yep. yeah, definitely looking forward to, um, getting better. Um, I've definitely lost like my, some of my race pace. So I'm looking forward to getting that back and seeing how I do. And also like the enduro cross racing is just, it's such a fun event because everybody's there. There's, we have time to watch, um, the pros race. We have time to, you know, hang out and visit with people and stuff. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just pretty, ex pretty excited for the, the whole event, the whole experience. Yeah. And sure. Sure. Who was your idol growing up? It doesn't have to be moto related. It could just be any, any person. Um, okay. Uh, well, so moto related because that's usually all I thought about growing up um, <laughs> up to people who rode. Um, I would say Jeff Aaron, um, Christine Carey Williams, Lia Sands, um, and like Albert Cabastani, some of the top world round riders. Um, and then also like, um, I always looked up to my, my mom and my grandma and, um, their family too, because they're just like, um, I don't pretty strong, independent women. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I can appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, I, th I think we touched on a couple of these real quick, because you already mentioned how old you were when you got started, both on trial, I think you said 12 years old, and then 20-something for enduro. Um, what was the first dirt bike that you owned, or moto bike that you owned? It could have been a trial bike. Um, well, the first dirt bike I've ever, I ever had was a PW80 when I was, I think I got that when I was seven. And then, um, then I kind of, over the years, I switched over to trials. And then, um, so the first dirt bike that I ever had was a KTM 200. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, you know, we've all had so much downtime with the COVID. Uh, everyone's kind of locked in. Luckily, you've been able to get out and ride a little bit. But, like, how ready are you to go back out and compete? Just get into the race. You, you were talking about race pace and stuff. How ready are you to get back out there? I, I feel like physically and mentally, I'm, I would be totally fine getting back to a race. Um, like the preparation side of things, I'm still, uh, it makes me like a, a little stressed out because I'm not great at uh, preparing and making sure that I have, you know, everything, like my bike's completely fine and everything together. Um, it's just like a lot of work. And then with all this downtime, it's kind of, it's, it's almost like an excuse to just be like, well, I don't absolutely have to do that right now so yeah, I'm kind yeah. of just I'm just like 
I would say my strong points are training and riding, but then <laughs> putting everything together, it's, it's, I'm, you know, it's maybe not a strong point of mine. So, um, I'm sure I could, I'm sure I could pull it together if we did have to go racing like this weekend or, you know, whenever it is going to happen, but I'd probably just be a little more stressed than I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have full confidence that you could uh, go out there and, and take another win. So that's, uh, I have no, no worries about that. Um, when you're not riding a Sherco, what are you doing for fun? Um, I love to mountain bike or ride my inspired bicycle. So bicycling is uh, top of the list. Um, also working out and um, just spending time with friends and family. Although I haven't, you know, I haven't gone home lately. Christmas was the last time, but um, I also, I like to go to concerts. That's a lot of fun. And recently, since with all this COVID stuff, I've been um, playing more video games and I'm really terrible at it, but I like <laughs> that it keeps my, you know, my brain interested for a while. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Um, what would be your advice for any young viewers watching this, especially, you know, young girls that are thinking, well, that's for my brother. That's, you know, that's not this. What would, what would you tell them? Um, I would say, you know, if, if, if you get on a bike and it makes you, you know, you enjoy your time on the bike and you have fun and it makes you happy, you know, if you get all those good feelings, then just don't let anything stop you because that's not, it's not worth it. You know, you, you have to just like continue doing things that motivate you and drive you and um, that bring you happiness and joy. Cause I mean, that's, that's definitely why I do it as I'm pretty lucky that, you know, I was born with um, some skills, you know, um, that where maybe writing comes easier to me than, than other girls. But overall the happiness that it brings me and the feeling of accomplishment and um having something to work towards and something to train for and always wanting to be better and like even you know it's bettering my my athletic abilities or just you know the way i eat or how much i stretch like everything it's just it's a constant motivation to be better and to to enjoy it and to have you know something to really live for i mean not say like that extreme but you know if you like to do if you like to ride then just keep doing that don't let anything get in your way yeah that's great that's great you just said food so what's your guilty pleasure miss you know are you work out so much and ride so your fitness but if there's one thing that just it's your guilty pleasure what is it that's the problem like i don't have just one thing i have <laughs> multiple things um i love sweets so i would probably I'd probably go after the sweets first, um, and I, but I also like you know really good savory food too. So um, I, I like pizza and pasta if I'm really gonna like have a blowout. And <laughs> um, <laughs> like sweet potato fries are great. And then yeah, anything with with uh, sugar in it is I you know I'm pretty happy when it comes to like cookies or candy or cake. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. I love it. That's great. Um, would you ever consider a different discipline of enduro? Maybe if it's like a GNCC or works or even MX, would, is that something that is of interest to you or you, you're just um, enduro cross and trials and, and hard enduro? Um, you, you know, those other um, disciplines are of interest, but I'm just really not good at going too fast. So <laughs> as much as I try or try, you know, try to push it. I'm, I just, um, I don't know. I feel like, uh, it's just trials and enduro cross are just a better suit for me. So, um, but I do, I did race, um, in 2012, I raced a couple of GNCCs and I did have fun. Same with national enduros, uh, raced a few of those and had a blast. So okay. yeah, I'd probably go back and do that. Um, just to, you know, have a fun day on the bike. So. Nice. That's awesome. Um, two superpowers, invisible or fly, which would you choose? I think, oh, um, I don't know. Invisible, just, just, uh, there's just so many moments where it's like, oh man, I wish I was there. And, you know, or like to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> where fly is kind of like, oh, I'm a little scared of heights anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome well that was actually 21 questions so i uh, apologies for for going long but if you uh 
have anything else you want to add or just anyone to thank or have a shout out for, go for it right now. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Team Sherco and you know all the sponsors that um, have been helping us along the way and trying to trying to build the team and um, supporting us. And I mean, I always have to thank my parents because if it wasn't for them um, constantly supporting me and telling me that I can you know be whatever I want to be, I wouldn't be in this situation. Um, so yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, Louise, thank you so much for your time and. Uh, Again, if anybody has any comments, they could post them below and we'll go ahead and ask Louise those questions after and see if we can get those answers for you. But thanks again for your time, Louise. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you, you too. Okay, cheers, bye. Yeah.